Start off with cadmium yellow. You just want a little bit of cad yellow on here, you don't need a lot. That's about good for that. And we'll pull out some yellow ochre. some of that. Grab just a little bit of a lizard and crimson. This is still that same brush. Still has all the other colors that were originally on it. up a little bit of purple. So you want it to be a 3 to 1 red to blue or crimson to phthalo if you want to be specific. When you're mixing the paint, pick it up off the palette. That way you'll make sure to get all the stuff up off the bottom. Because sometimes a color will stick to the bottom of the palette and then when you try to go load your brush, you'll get streaks of different colors and it looks booty. <laughs> Alright, so we'll put some little clouds up here. Um, I'm trying to think of like a, a way of doing clouds I haven't shown you guys yet. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll just do little rolly clouds. So just with the fan brush you're going to use the corner of the brush. You're just going to do little circles. Just keep the brush moving. That's like the big key. If you stand in one spot with the brush, you're just going to end up getting like big cotton balls. I mean, if you want like big cotton ball kinds, you know, just do it like that. But I don't want big cotton balls. Clouds are pretty free, they just kind of float around, you know, so there's no real right or wrong way of shaping these. You want to try to not
touch the top edges. You know, try to keep those nice and dark. Because we're going to go back in and do some blending. And it makes it look a lot better if you can have a nice solid top edge on it. Alright, so I'm going to clean off the brush that we did the sky with. with the top corner of the brush when I'm doing like the winding up part I'm only touching like the tip of the bristles so there's maybe only like a little group of like 40 bristles that are actually touching the canvas so I'll just start right here just gently wind it up doing tiny little circles So when you do one, you can just beat the excess paint off of it and then go in and do your little fluffy up motion. Okay. So that one's been fluffed. Now we'll do the one below it. I'm holding the brush at an angle just so I can make sure that it's just the top bristles that are actually touching. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure either. There's just enough pressure so the brush maintains contact. That's really about it. So we'll come back in here, do your little fluffy up. Alright, now that those are fluffed, go over to this other side. Just winding it up and you go back in and do the little upward now you probably by this point have a little bit of paint on the brush so if you wanted to you could even just tap in like a little indication of a couple little floaty clouds I mean it'll just kind of clean off your brush more than anything Alright, so then once you have these all like fluffed up, very gently go across the whole thing. Very, very gently though, like you're barely touching the canvas. And it'll help blend some of the little streaky things that you pulled up when you're doing your little fluffing up stroke. And it just makes it so your cloud has a little bit of motion to it. Just like that, you have some nice little purpley clouds off in the back. All right. And then if you wanted to, you could actually go like below some of these with white. 
just to put like an indication that the sun is coming up from below it. But you don't need to do that. All right, so now we're gonna put some like kind of mesa type mountains, southwestern type things. So I'm gonna grab some of this purple that we've been using, put it off to the side, and put some white into it. Alright, so now you gotta kind of think about how you want your mountains to be. I haven't really done these kind of mountains before, so I'm just gonna kind of guess. But they should have like flat tops and pretty steep inclines and drops and stuff. Maybe something. So scrub that color on there. Then you're gonna go in with your big brush and pull this out. So when you're doing this part, you can use your brush strokes to kind of get an idea of how you're gonna shape these things. into that same color and just kind of here and there like kind of think of where there would be like a little ridge line going down and just kind of drop them in Just little indications. You don't want a whole lot of detail going on back there. And then what you can do is kind of go in and tap these a little bit just to soften them. help blend everything a little better. There's one layer. Now we're just going to darken up the color and do another one in front of it. So let's go right here. Over. Down. 
just going to put these wherever. gonna blend this out. into that same dark color and just put in a couple more of those little ridge lines here and there. Whatever. Alright, go back in and tap all these little lines. All the tapping really does is it just kind of removes any big hunks of excess paint. and gentle go upward pay attention to your angles too like try to follow the angle of these little ridge lines that you put in some blue into it this time. And this one will just go Since this one is so close, you don't really need to pull it down very far. Put some little, 
ridge lines on here. There's all of our little mountain ridges. Looks like they're kind of showing up. The sky looks like it's almost just white though on there. Alright. Um, trap, I went to Kendall College of Art and Design over in Grand Rapids. Alright, so now to put like some bushes and stuff. I'm gonna have like a little road right here. So I think to do that, I'll just use this fan brush. All right, so just go into some of this brown and some of this dark color that we were using earlier. some blue into it just to darken it up. Alright, so scrub a little path. And for your perspective, it should get wider the closer it is to you. It should be skinnier the further back you go. Our little path. Actually, no, I probably should have put my dirt on first now that I think about it. Alright, so that's going to get covered up. <laughs> Alright, we'll go into some dark sienna. And I'm just going to lay this on real quick. This is just putting on a nice little base coat. still see our path. I totally play on that. Yeah. Now that same dark color that we had. Let's go and get this a little bit more pronounced. rocking strokes. I'm going to go along the edges of these because I want to try to make it look like this is like a little area that like jeeps drove through. So I want to try to make it look like little ruts on the side. And you're basically just doing that with brush strokes. So these are just tiny little rocking strokes like little U's. And hopefully what it'll do is it'll make this be like a high point. And you can even go over this middle part. Like that. Doing like little strokes like this to round it over. And then once you have that, it'll cross the whole thing real gently. 
Oops. And it just kind of goes back off into nowhere. Alright, so now we're going to put some bushes all around there. We have the knife. So I think it's going to make up some kind of a random color here. I just need a dark color. I don't really think it matters too much what color it is. So I'm putting like a really light blue highlight on these. So I think I just need it to be dark. Maybe I'll just use, well, you know, let me use this brush again. This brush is so good at making little bushes. right here. Make a little clump. I'm just going to kind of tap these in randomly. And go further, further back. Kind of off into nothing. put your bushes in wherever you want them. There's no right or wrong spot to put them. Wherever you want a bush, drop it in. But you'll get better results if you start at the bottom and work up. It'll naturally get lighter as it goes up. Alright, so now all we gotta do is just go through here and put on some little highlights. We'll be good to go. So to do that, I think I'll use this round brush. Let me grab a little bit of liquid white. Just to help break it up. So liquid white, titanium white. Thalo blue. You don't need a lot of thalo blue. Thalo blue is very, very, very strong. Alright, now we'll just start tapping in. little bushes. But really pay attention to where you're putting these little clumps. Don't hit at random. Take your time. Make sure you leave some dark. And if your paint stops sticking well, grab some more liquid white. It'll loosen up the paint. There we go. It should come off nice and easy. You shouldn't need to put any pressure when you're doing this. It should just come right off. And if it doesn't, just put on a little more liquid white and it will.
But all you're really doing is just touching the bristles to the canvas. It'll take off what it wants. Now that we have those, we're just going to go back in with the fan brush and just real gently along the bottoms blend it all together. This is very, very light. Very light. You can go up into them and like grab some of the color and pull it out. It's kind of just like if you're doing like a snowy field. It's the same technique. You just grab it and pull in one direction. This is just how you clean up all the little feet, all the little bush feet. That makes a shadow person. Mm -hmm. So, since you were just out in Joshua Tree, let's put a Joshua Tree in here. I have no idea how to do that, but <laughs> we're going to figure it out. They only have a couple of branches. Aren't, yeah, aren't they just they go up about like, like this tall and a couple little knobs coming out? They have little knobs out to the side like that, and then they got little, it's sort of rough bark on the, the the smaller branches, and then it's got a uh, little sort of olive green at the tip ends, the last foot or so. So then yeah. you kind of just put like weird little yep. arm things yep. coming out. Maybe one down from below too. They'll have them coming out going like that. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. But they're short branches. You don't get very long. And they always go upright. Like, the hands are up like that. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of do they have leaves out there? They they're almost like uh, or thorns, cactus like kind of things at the end of them, and they're little. There's almost they're almost like this kind of stuff at the end, of it, except it's green. Yeah, and it's got little pink, little uh, yellow flowers sometimes. Little pinpoint flowers on the very tip ends. looking things? Well, they're more like watermelon looking things. I don't know what watermelon is like, like the plant. Yeah, they're not really fond like they're like a cucumber shape, but it's got little teeny needly like things coming off of the edge of it. It's more like that? Yeah.
sort of football shaped. Yeah, that's what they look like. And you said they have like little yellow flowers? They'll have one little yellow flower in each of the branches about right at the very tips. Just little pinpoints. That's fine. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. I'll go clean up the bottom of that. There's a desert bush called an Oklotea that you might want to try sometime. It's about a nice little Joshua tree. Not quite the size of a Joshua tree, a little bit smaller. No, hold on, you don't need to tell me this right now. They're just like this. So this is going to be the end of this one. And then it's got little red flowers up here. So we'll go into some paint thinner. Add the bright red. saying this one. That is a nice little southwest one. Gives you an idea of how to do different mountains at least. If you want to try to do a Joshua tree, now you know how to do a Joshua tree.